would like to ask our panelists here about some questions. Uh, maybe I will start with Andrea, ladies first. Uh, what do you think uh, the TA role will evolve to? Or is, is there, are there some necessary changes which the TA role need to go through? Well, don't tell me. Okay, good question. <laughs> Um, thanks for the question. Uh, I guess the TA role needs to evolve. Uh, needs to evolve because uh, it's a continuous process. It's not like the current uh, need. Uh, and uh, uh, TA people need to reflect the situation around us. And as the situation is coming in, we hurry everything. So uh, we need to react to that. So uh, it's about upskilling. It's about being much more personalized uh, with the access to the candidates be much more creative about creating or, and bringing the new ways of contacting people, contacting mm -hmm. people, searching for the right group to and hear their stories, their motivations, why they want to come to join and I'm a, am I able in our com company to create them the space for that, to fill it in and is it uh, both way uh, doable for us and uh, I guess this is the continuous story and we need to be uh, brighter in that and uh, let's say uh, even faster <laughs> because so far we were much more focused on being only like structured for the processing and now i see that the need is to go more on the side of talent branding on mm -hmm. uh, my personal networking and uh, we and listening to people around me and as well using all the automation not to bother myself with all the admin stories and things like that and use the great uh, technical helpers as you described right now to reduce amount of this time for me but to have a real time for uh, talking to people and bringing them into the right place so it's not so much new but it needs to be much more clever and faster for all of us, of all of us sorry. it's about the upskilling and about this kind of I absolutely agree, especially with the thing that I usually say when it can be automated, automate it. Because otherwise, if monkey then do it, do you want to do the work of monkey? No. You need to do some work where you can add the added value to, to the work. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Miloš, how about uh, in, uh, at Microsoft? The same thing. Wait a second, you know, because after the Jamis presentation, I can't <laughs> come up with something smart. Uh, I think if you look at the unprecedented times we have around us, you know, in terms of what's happening with the market, what's happening with the companies, what's happening with the talent market, and the companies are evolving. So talent acquisition function needs to work together with the companies or ahead of that, ahead of that change, in order to provide value. And if you're talent acquisition leader and you say, I need to transform a talent acquisition organization, it means you have a problem. You mm. need to do a dramatic change in your talent acquisition function. If you have a learning agility, if you have a capable team that is adjusting to the needs of your company or your clients as well, in your case, then you can be ahead of the change, ahead of the curve, and then you can add additional value to your company or to, or to your clients. So embedding this like learner mindset in talent acquisition function, whether that is technical way how to source, finding new tools, automating things, but also, as Johnny was mentioning, and it's fun, like your presentation is pretty much what we are trying to do. <laughs> Just land the Microsoft over there and we're trying to do all of those, all of those things. Uh, it, it's actually, you know, this human aspect of it and how you are addi add additional value. Because you're a recruiter, but you also are part of talent management function. You also have understanding of compensation and benefits. And that's the value that you provide to your clients, to your customers, or your to internal, internal hiring managers. So it's an evolving journey of, of talent acquisition function. And I think you know, all of you guys here you know, on this side are, are part of that, you know, because that's why you're coming here to hear about the latest trends, to hear about what companies are doing, and also how can you figure out for your organization to provide value to your clients or to your managers. I would maybe add one thing, uh, we, we know it even from the training business, part of our good call uh, business is training business recruitment academy, where we sometimes can uh, correlate with the needs uh, of, of the customers. And for example, in the past two years, we can see really increased interest in personal branding for recruiters and for recruitment in general. So HR departments, TA departments, they want to, as you mentioned, for example, hiring manager, they don't have a clue about that, but also from the from the level of the personal branding so they can lure more people into the organization. Or 
even like HR marketing departments, they are thinking like how to take advantage of the network of our employees who are on LinkedIn, they have their own profiles. We have maybe some we have maybe some followers on our LinkedIn company page, but we have the army of people on LinkedIn. If they post something, that would be huge and let's say for free kind of. Yeah. So we can see really a high demand for example for this even for a traditional corporations not only like things like Accenture etc but even like Bosch, Kingspan and these like manufacturing companies. What's your take on that? Uh, I'll follow up to your last comment there and say certainly we've seen that organizations are being successful and sort of running are no longer hiring an uh, expensive creative agency to come up with a campaign and run it with paid media. They are, as you said, trying to empower the employee to share their stories. Um, and not to save money, um, but to drive more authentic stories because I think the, the talent market is much more sophisticated. They don't believe your heavily branded messaging anymore, but they absolutely believe um, um, a sales associate in your team at Prague sharing what a great day she had or what a great week she had or the gift her, her boss gave her for achieving, achieving something that she shared on Instagram or they did. But definitely that's a, that's a big trend. But I come back to some of the skills pieces. Um, you know, if you look at our two presentations and you look at some of our comments here, I, uh, I am always asked, what are the skills that need to develop for our team? And practically our customers say, you know, we want to roll out the following skills or training. But I think structure has to come first, certainly in a scale team. And on the highest level, I look at a, a modern TA team has individuals who are candidate focused and individuals who are business focused. You talk about a lot of the techniques you were sharing in your deck. They're extremely important to understand if you're in a candidate facing role, how to find the talent, how to engage with the talent, to understand their needs. It's very hard to be expert in that and also expert in the business, understanding, as you said, talent aspects, mobility, complement bends, etc. So I think structurally, to set yourself up for success, you need to make sure you are you know, at the very highest level having folks who are more business oriented, who understand the business needs and become experts in how you build assessment processes, understanding the wider view of talent, understanding the business and the team I'm hiring for and their needs. But separately, you can have a team that are expert in the candidate market. And so it's very difficult today for microphones to work. I think it's very difficult today for our recruiters to do all of that well. It's I don't think impossible. So once you have some sort of reasonable scale, I think the job of the leader is to make sure you have a structure that then can leverage all of these different skills and tools. Maybe a follow-up question uh, to you, Johnny. You mentioned a deployment. We, for example, do with Microsoft a deployment project where, uh, of course, especially on our market, as I said, really low unemployment rate, even in comparison with other countries in the European Union or in Europe. Um, so it's even hard to uh, rescue someone because we are upskilling some sort of people which will be missing somewhere else. Uh, when you rescue someone from hospitality, the person will be missing in the hospitality. Uh, do you have some other examples, maybe not only from these like enterprise uh, companies and IT guys, etc., but maybe from some like uh, maybe hospitality sector or some I don't know if, if you are repairing something like wishing machine, something like that. Do you have some examples of a deployment projects, maybe from the UK, US, or elsewhere? Yeah, I think it was you got me onto a, a, a website in the US that trained people how to uh, repair washing machines. And it was, uh, it was a site that would give you online courses and you could get you know, digital certificates, but all the major manufacturers, appliance manufacturers, were partners and they were hiring from this group. So as people graduated from these programs, people just, you know, people like you and I who wanted to learn how to fix their dryer. I just fixed my dryer uh, last last month. I took it apart because I wasn't spending 400 euros on a new dryer, not again, and I fixed it. And I watched lots of videos on YouTube to do this. But this was a site that seemed to be just for people to learn how to repair their appliance. But on the back end, they were using the data to understand who was excelling at the courses. And then they were basically connecting those profiles with manufacturing employers who needed those skills. So 
True story, our dryer broken down yesterday. So. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we can do that. We can do that. I can sort this out for you. Yeah, there's, I think this has always been the opportunity. I remember seven, eight years ago in the US, I met with the CIO of Hayes, group group, and he asked me, what's the future? And I said, your organization, your recruitment, staffing business, I said, your, your, your customers want talent from you. At the moment, you move talent around, to your point, Jose. I said, but why aren't you creating talent? Why aren't you more of a training company? Why aren't you more skilling and developing people? And, you know, we big chat about this, but I think that is the opportunity for, you know, RPO providers, staffing agencies, anyone providing services. The business doesn't, you know, the, the clients don't care how you do it so much. They, and because the, their clients, the, the, the business, want the talents doing the job. But even if I push it to the extreme, I remember a good friend of mine who was the global head of recruiting for Intel until last year. He told me how his metric changed. He used to be measured on you know, cost of hire, time to hire. And they changed his metric to time to ramp. Mm -hmm. So time to ramp. Because the business wanted a ramped up employee doing the job. And recruiters were measured by how quickly it took to hire them. And the, the manager of sales or engineering or whatever she manages, she doesn't really care how long it takes to hire them. She wants somebody who's productive. And so when you, when, you, when you change the metrics like that, you think differently about how to solve the problem. Um, and maybe hiring, therefore, isn't the solution. Because maybe somebody internally or training someone from scratch actually is the better solution when you really look at the end customer, who is the business, who wants the talents to do work, what do they actually need, and we have to open our minds to how to solve that. So it's basically kind of like a washing machine repair, like on Uber style, Uber style repair. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrea, what do you think, can you elaborate more into what do you expect from, uh, from a TA expert, from the perspective of, of the skill of such a person? Well, I will continue in what you both guys sure. mentioned, just like because of, and I confirmed that my husband uh, repaired the washing machine just because of video on YouTube as well. So it works, and I guess that's the clever way how to how to find out the the uh, solution for myself if I am seeking for for it. Just like not, it was said to me to do it, but because I want, and this is the very very basic I expect from the people who want to join my team. Just uh, like how they think about things in a little bit out of the box way, and I don't need to be super creative because if you are hiring uh, dozens of IT people, you need to be creative in the way that, that, that it's pleasant for them and not that that is a super uh, I don't know whatever creative marketing thing. But uh, it needs to be bright, and uh, uh, so the TA profile for me and the expert should be really uh, caring of how the other side is thinking, what's important for them, what's their motivation, and try to find out the places, the, uh, the institutional situations where they can find, where he, she can find such people. And uh, it's not, um, that the, uh, again, uh, the person need to be as well a little bit uh, uh, tuned that way, because then they can very easily find out the connection and they can discuss in the way that they understand each other. So now in my team, I have very different uh, people. They would never sit together in one, at one, at one table and have a coffee. They would never met and put together. But now they, they are doing it and uh, everybody is very different profile. And it's because just because of we have very different business needs and uh, recruiters need to be a part of the team also mentally. They need to understand the strategy why business needs such profile. Is there any development in their need for the future, any additional skill we will need to have to search and have in mind? So they need to a little bit leave with them that, that, that thought and then to structure the searching procedure just because just be uh, just with this uh, thought in their mind. So uh, it's always about being creative, uh, being smart and uh, not to be afraid of doing mistakes. Everybody's doing and uh, the nice way you are able to communicate about it is always the solution. So that's what fits very much in my team and th that's how I try to uh, search for the newcomers. Mm -hmm. And I do not care really about their um, experience, previous experience. I'm, I do not care whether the person is junior or senior, how long and where 
is he, she coming from? I always much more think about the personality, about the way of thinking, about the motivation of that person, why is such thing important for me, what I'm searching for, and I don't, I don't mean the benefits and stuff like that, I really mean the place where I want to grow. And then uh, when they are in the team, just uh, the development of the team is not like one platform for everybody, it's again personalized, mm -hmm. because everybody mm -hmm. needs to be developed in their own skills. I think we can see nowadays that there are personal assistants being reskilled to recruiters and it's r r working really nicely. Yeah, we can see it even at Recruiter Academy people going through this without this background. So for you that would be that could be like a suitable candidate for this role. Yeah. Thank you Andrea. Miloš? Oh, how much time we have? <laughs> Uh, I won't repeat the motivation part, I agree with everything that you, that you said. I, I want to talk about you know, competencies, knowledge, skills, abilities. You know, because there are some competencies or abilities that are not related to the recruitment not only, but what you want to see. Resilience, adaptability, you want to see learning agility. Because then you are creating a recruiter, maybe a business person after that. We had successful cases where we had recruiters moving to the business. Because you're supporting the business so well, business recognizes the talent and the skill that you have. You yeah. have people moving and you know into different different roles. Uh, when you talk about the core recruitment skills, uh, what I really want to see is I'm very passionate about the assessment. You know that's one of my my passions. So we have this thing in Microsoft. We call it the screening. Like a recruiter who is capable to broaden the talent pool by identifying skills and capabilities in in a different places. So if you stick by the job title, the company, and the market situation that we just see, like that's not possible. So having a capability to identify the skills and capabilities in different groups, but also connected to that, you can screen in as much as you want. You need to have the capability to influence the business. <laughs> Back to your point, everybody's a recruiter, you know, to have that consultative approach as well to, to do that with your business stakeholders. Because you can screen in the sourcing stage, in the interview stage, the hiring manager screening doesn't happen, nothing happens. It's work, it's wasted. And then connected to that is also data. You know, I really, really, when I'm hiring recruiters, want to see the, the data skill. But not a data skill, like in a sense, or like here's the data. The next layer is data insights. What insights you get from the data? By the way, you need to check LinkedIn target insights. <laughs> really, you know, not selling it, yeah. but it's really, yeah. it's really good too. But then again, you get insights from that data, but what you do with those insights, mm -hmm. that connects back to your consultative approach. And then, you know, also creativity. Mm -hmm. Give you an example. Oh, if you have a hiring manager, I want to hire this skill set in Egypt. And the recruiter says, oh, yeah, there's 25 people there. Manager, great, 25 people there. Like, okay, hold on. 10 of them already work in our company. Five of them are the partner. So it's 10 left. Great, 10. And you saw, you show the funnel. You don't know what the funnel is. But then, what do you, how do you create a story around that? And how do you influence that person? You know, how do you change to another skill set? How do you recognize these people who have that skill set, where they came from? Then you expand your talent pool, then you're screening in the talent pool. And then you have a conversation, is it the right location or not the right location? So all of these things recruiters need to be really impactful at, you know, to consult, to consult the business. And uh, yeah, maybe I can do this. I just got an email from a hiring manager, if you're, if you're fine, I won't mention any names. This morning when I was coming here, from the hiring manager in, in Microsoft, let me see if I can find it. This will describe you what I'm looking for in a, in a recruiter. Where is it? Where is it? Sorry, guys. Okay, here it is. So the hiring manager writing to me feedback on one of my recruiters. And it says, first of all, thank you for bringing amazing energy to our course generating energy in the recruitment process. I know it was a busy period, you will have many positions open. However, I had uh, uh, all the time the feeling that you are really driving whole recruitment process and successfully this, <coughs> orchestrating all resources internally. Back to my point. Second of all, I know how difficult it is to precisely define this role profile, having in mind uniqueness of the role and specific background we are expecting. So it's a very unique, unique niche role. However, in the second wave, you managed to find an amazing pipeline. There was a first search, it didn't work well, mm -hmm. reflecting, learning agility, acquire, you know, did, uh, looking for different skill sets. Managed to find an amazing pipeline of passive candidates on the market. All of them they came to me and the other interviewers, already having clarity about the role, but also already being excited about the opportunity, which is the outcome of your introduction call and the way how you position the role and the company for. 
So we finally, it was difficult to make a final decision. We have top three candidates, we make a decision to hire one of them super finally, but we also build a, with the pipeline of talent for our future, for our future roles. So like this is summarizing what the recruiter in the organization that is very complex and very niche needs to do to be successful. Perfect. Nice, nice uh, use case, actually. Real, <laughs> real life use case. Johnny, do you have uh, anything to add to this? To build on both of those points, I think, you're starting, uh, the, as Andre said, the, the profile of candidates we've seen in the last two years, most modern recruiters and most teams never worked in recruiting before. They were teachers, they were restaurant managers, um, uh, many other skills, uh, or many other roles with the common skills um, to Rosh's point is that they, they had experience being customer facing, they usually worked well under pressure, they were able to adapt very well, um, they had great listening skills, um, they had great learning agility. I think these are the, not only the skills of a great recruiter, but to your point, but actually we talked about screening in versus screening out. It's a very important concept, and it's, it's critical to leverage really all the new talent pools we'll have to hire from and the new ways of working. Um, we have to move away from this screening out method, which you know Amazon in the bar raiser program probably they 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 become this unfortunately which everyone tries to copy what Amazon and Google do, but they did it 15, 20 years ago and it may not be right for today. In fact you need an update to that. And the screening in methodology both for your own team but for the business is is not only required it has better outcomes. When you're less focused on keyword matching that somebody did the job in this previous role um, but to the point of the advisory piece, you won't always get that of a requirement. You have to dig and you have to use those advisory skills to be able to talk to a hiring manager or a team to deeply understand what the person will be doing, translate that into what might be the correct behavior and competencies, and then build a plan on how to hire for those. And it's harder to source for. Like mm -hmm. it is. It's harder to source for competencies. It's easy to source for job titles and yeah. skills. And so it just requires a different approach. And uh, you know, I, I think the traditional expert keyword searcher isn't necessarily the person that we need in the team going forward. But I also think, to, to your point, Vash, the modern recruiter doesn't just have a career in the recruiting team. She can go anywhere in the business if she is successful because those are very transferable skills in the organization's different roles. And it's very exciting to be able to do that from a modern recruiting team. Maybe final question for me, then we can move if you have any other questions. Uh, Andra, what, what are your priorities, top priorities for 2023? Uh, my priorities for 2023 are uh, stay quite the same as are still for, for this year because uh, in the way we decided to uh, build up a new IT recruitment team. Uh, so now we are at this stage that we have them all on board and now we need to uh, set them uh, in the team and uh, somehow um, uh, connect them to to all, all the networks within within the company and uh, let them grow uh, mm -hmm. among the others that we have there already now and uh, uh, this is very, very first and the other is uh, to uh, work with uh, all the others that I have right now in the recruitment team on their development we, we decided considering all the difficulties they are uh, coming and probably company will face, we do not know. So the very first one is, and uh, it was uh, in your uh, presentation Jenny, as well, is we are preparing for this four day uh, uh, week. Uh, so we need to set a little bit of uh, uh, processes behind it all. It will take time, that there is still way to go, a uh, big uh, long way. But uh, uh, this uh, needs to be reflected in our way how to do the uh, talent branding and talent acquisition. And uh, we will continue in what we are doing right now, uh, using all this flexibility uh, possible uh, for uh, help. You know, we have a rule that we need to be at least uh, once uh, in the uh, in the week together, like a team, to share. It's necessary, and uh, we uh, still struggle of being overloaded of many, many, many tons of administration activities. So again, we will continue in reducing it with implementation of new system that we are right now going through and uh, for the next year we will try to keep all the motivation despite all the negative uh, information coming we will try to be more productive in terms of seeking for the new faces for the company because still IT sector is very 
a big demand and we need to be more efficient in it. That's why we have this new IT team. And uh, that, that will, that it's a lot of work for all of us. And uh, But it's not like a big new target for the coming. It's the mm -hmm. ongoing process for us. I think building like a new IT recruiter's team is a big target on its own. So yeah. <laughs> a big task. Thank you. Uh, yeah. We have a, like a global focus areas in terms of talent acquisition, and you know a lot of them are going to presentation that John shared. Number one, inclusive hiring, you know, and that includes also internal hiring. And my second part of my role is managing the internal hiring team for for EMEA, recognizing the need that we have as well to how do we treat our talent internally, how do we allow them with career opportunities to change roles, because you can check surveys wherever you want. Number one reason people leave company is lack of learning and development opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then all of these wonderful things that we're doing for the external talent, sourcing, whatever, videos, recognizing them, sending them, like, we don't do a fraction of for that for our internal talent, who are there already, who are ready to change mm -hmm. the roles, who have the learning agility, who understand mm -hmm. the company, who understand the needs. And of course, you know, you need to provide them the right experience on that, on that journey. So when I think about my, my priorities, it's inclusive hiring. It's also recruiter capability but not recruiter per se capability, recruitment capability for everybody who is in the recruitment process. Everybody is a recruiter. We are rolling out some inclusive hiring trainings for recruitment teams, for hiring managers, for interviewers. Like that's also a priority. And we have uh, experience. Like experience can make such a difference. You know, how do we treat our candidates? How, is, how responsive you are? When you give feedback, how you give feedback? Do you have time to give a verbal feedback? We just shoot out the automated emails. Like there's a lot of work that we can do as a talent acquisition function, recruitment function, anywhere, you know. Go on Glassdoor, check the feedbacks, you know, from the candidates that interview for, for the roles, and you receive that such a big, big opportunity to have, to provide better experience, because then you create your company followers, you create your fans, mm -hmm. you create a sustainable pipeline of talent for the future, because one good feedback resonates really well, one bad feedback finds much more people, you know, yeah. uh, compete, not in a sense hiring from competitors, but hiring, competing for talent, you know, but that's, that's a focus area. Of course, we have our own internal like operational excellence that we want to really increase and in how do we track the process and how we leverage our tools and, and all of these things. So quite a, quite a big task, but one that really I see the biggest opportunity, especially in the times, you know, of the recession, economic downturn, if you get a uh, game, uh, game of Thrones fans, like, you know, we just expect dragons to come from north. You know, to <laughs> but that's the opportunity to really, you know, tighten up like the internal process you can and really, you know, focus on your internal talent. Everybody will be hiring less externally, like this is what I see from talent acquisition leaders, but then the talent that you have internally has much, much more important role to play in developing your organization in the upcoming, upcoming year, hopefully and less. Point on that, uh, at least unlike the company you mentioned that uh, they need to use LinkedIn to find their internal people. In case of Microsoft, LinkedIn is their internal so uh, service, so they can do that and... <laughs> but LinkedIn, is what, you know, LinkedIn, if you just take it at face value, you know, it's a great tool. But I just had one of my recruiters ping me, I just discovered this wonderful talent pipeline, Apple candidates in this country, Central Eastern Europe. I was like, no, they don't have the office here. How do you mean? Look, 650 people. Yes, and I look at it, and I look at my, you know, LinkedIn talent insights. You know what happened? There's a local company that the local name is actually Apple in English, and then because the profiles are in English, they just tag themselves they're working for Apple. <laughs> in that country, it's Yabuka. So it means that 650 people working for Apple in that country, and if you don't use data insights and really look into it, like you will think like, oh my God, this is this is great. <laughs> so LinkedIn is amazing. LinkedIn is great, but also we also just recently saw like a lot of like fake profiles popping up. People tagging themselves, working for important organizations, trying to build up their their connections, security roles popping up. You know, and you just look at the profile and see it's like a, it's clearly not somebody who is working in the, in the security. So yes, love it, you know, amazing tool, but also be, be smart and use it. There is actually insider info. There is actually Apple Office with 200 developers up at the Primark at Microsoft Square. Actually, not not so many people know. So they actually got the rule that they need to put down the shades every morning. So they are kind of like low-profile undercover uh, undercover office. What's your priorities for 2023, Johnny? So for next year, I'm really trying to follow some of the more mature TA teams that we've worked with for the last few years. And similar to the themes here, we're seeing that the focus 
on from recruiting challenges is moving towards the business challenge. Have the right people doing great work in the business. And it's complicated. And I hinted at some of the things today, but you know, it starts with onboarding the talent after we've hired them. How successfully are we onboarding them to, to set themselves up for success in the job they're hiring? But also in those early months, building a network so that in two years, three years, they're positioned to get their next job in mobility. How do we change the mind of leaders to think better about internal talent? People, I have a good friend of mine who runs exec recruiting for a big tech company. He's got 40 exec recruiters working for him. And he said 50% of all their roles could be filled, filled with internal talent. Mm -hmm. But the, the hiring managers, the leaders say, we want people from the fan employers, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google. They hired them two years ago. They did a great job. They're never ready for the next role, but they're, they, but they're internal now. Like, I want the external people. They're brilliant, right? So there's a mind sh mindset shift uh, with leaders to think about internal talent differently. Mm -hmm. The internal talent don't necessarily have access to the same opportunities. Advertising roles internally is not the same as actually providing mobility. Mobility is breaking down some of the barriers and some of the structures and the rules we have in place. It's encouraging um, skill development in the teams. Um, and a lot of that is on the leaders. So we launched uh, a new internal mobility solution and an onboarding solution this year to help organizations scale learning to the different stakeholders. And next year, we're going to launch a leadership solution. Because to me, it all goes back to the leaders, right? You know, how do you have the right talent in the right place? We can have, you know, solutions like recruiting and stuff doing a great job, but are leadership aligned in things like feedback, in driving psychological safety in their teams? Do they think about, you know, um, trying to, uh, to, to, to assess for, for skills rather than experiments? Um, are they, you know, encouraging of the careers of their of their of their talent? Um, all of these things really really important. So it's just to me, uh, uh, it's a journey that we will all go on. When you solve for recruiting, and you find a new challenge. You solve for onboarding, you find okay mobility and I think all their problem. Okay, retention becomes my problem. Leadership skills become my problem. Strategy becomes my problem. So I get excited about this stuff because mm -hmm. there are all new new problems to solve new ways that, you know, to me the solutions are right there. Everything we need to solve for has been solved by somebody else. But do we have, um, does everyone understand that? Do they have the motivation to change? Do they have uh, the, the tools and skills to then drive that change? But if we're hiring the right people with the right base attitudes and motivations around learning agility, um, flexibility and, 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 and openness to change, I think it's all very possible, but it's a long, complicated journey that hopefully we're all going to be a part of. Perfect. Are there any questions uh, from the audience? Before we go to the catering, actually, Blake chose for us. Blake, we will tell you how it was. No, don't worry. Apart from where are the dragons? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I have one. Um, what do you think about, you know, You mean in terms of automation or like uh, this human approach to the uh, Yes, for automation okay. and uh, yeah, online and uh, all of these applications etc. Et so what do you think about that? Because of course it belongs to 2022, but... Yeah. Should I take it? Go on, go on. Uh, when you think about, like, go back five or ten years ago, you know, and how we thought that, you know, this automation, AI, whatever will come to recruitment, you know, we thought it's going to be much quicker and a much bigger scale. It's happening, it's here, but it cannot replace a recruiter like person. Because, you know, I said it like years ago to my team. Don't be afraid of using your job, you know, like if you automate a part of your job, there'll be something else in the function that you will be able to do. And if they automate, you know, interviews, then there's a smart candidate who will automate answers to the interviews, and you will again need a person, you know, to step in and have the deeper, deeper assessment. So people who are coming and joining the companies, you know, you need to have a story for them. You need to be a human. You need to reflect the culture of your, of your company. So new generations, old generations, we're all looking for something more than just a job. 
we look for flexibility, we look for inspiring people to work. Most importantly, people look for purpose. And then if you can provide a purpose for that, for that person, you, you need to be in communication with that. So when you have a great recruitment team who represent your company in the right way, or great in storytelling, showcasing what you need to do, they give the purpose. You need to have the entire organization, as John said, in that entire chain have a similar story. Everybody has a role to play. And then it's a, it's a dance with the candidate. You, know, you cannot rely on AI to do that you know, dance with the candidate, understanding their capabilities, understanding their motivation, adjusting your approach. But also, you know, for me, culture is the most important part of it. Like we assess people if they are not going to be a culture fit, if they're going to add to your culture. And that's a tricky bit. You don't want clones of your people, you want people who bring something new. And that's difficult to assess. But when you get in that, that mood, when you recognize the skills and capabilities, when you position that candidate to a hiring manager, that can add something additional to their team. Not being the same as 10 people they have, but bringing something new, and then you cannot replace that with any automation. You need recruiters, you need smart people, passionate about recruitment, and you have to add storytelling uh, to the list of capabilities that is very important to be successful in this function. Amen. <laughs> I fully, uh, fully agree. And just a very, a very short answer. Uh, from my understanding, it's great that we have lots of uh, possibilities for all these automations and the technical support which we can have. It's good that recruiter knows about it. And uh, it's good to choose which one of it will will help me in my in my work because I need uh, space and uh, free time for talking to people and to have it, uh, all these technologies should help me. So the, it needs to be balanced, and the balance should be uh, let on the people to decide how much of their uh, personality fits rather to the technical support, or if they are more personal, focused, uh, driven people, that they want to rather have face-to-face -face interviews and uh, not to spend time on, uh, or hours on searching on the LinkedIn or other, other technologies. So, I would love to have a team that they are aware of all these support things, they can use it and they can select which one they will use and uh, to have it in their balance. And I fully understand and I very support that uh, the personal touch is the very base for everybody coming now in the situation of, high, of finding a new job. People are a little bit scared, that's what I, uh, feel, what I feel from uh, it, it has changed after COVID. It's even more, more visible that the young generation uh, is asking for a kind of freedom that is uh, and guidance from the very beginning that uh, wasn't so obvious uh, years ago. Uh, now they want to be sure that they will have uh, the space for their free time, that they will have a space for the development within the company and that it will make sense for them. And it's a very clear message they are bringing uh, at the very beginning, so we need to be prepared for it. And uh, uh, it's about the communication, face-to-face -face interaction. I know that it's not possible in all the companies mm -hmm. if you are hiring people from, from abroad, you cannot have this face-to-face, -face, but still using these technolo uh, technologies at least to have sure. it uh, online and have their face visible and discuss uh, mm -hmm. what they really desire for and to have them a feeling that you can find it in our company and it will be both way uh, uh, winning. I would just quickly add that maybe the, the company Frenchy, I think uh, you showed that they, they wanted to be human oriented but there were no human left for them. So they needed to put a human into the machine. Uh, and I, I think it's proven that uh, people in general, when they want to solve something, they rather solve it by putting the question into Google, YouTube, unless calling, for example, somewhere and have the human to human conversation. That's why, for example, maybe also in McDonald's, etc., you have these uh, cashiers, you can click everything sometimes Maybe we feel it like, as you mentioned, that we want to be like human oriented, but sometimes people, I think for some certain tasks, they don't want to face a human, a human being when it's possible to do it quick, quick, quick. That's just my take on that. Johnny, final words? Um, on the McDonald's example, um, my friend referred to as the HR manager for, HR director for McDonald's in the UK Ireland when they brought in the, the, the yeah. kiosks. And I said to her, well, it's, you know, it's great we reduce the amount of staff. It's great cost savings. She said, no, no, no. We, we don't reduce the amount of staff. What we've been able to do is redeploy the people who were also behind the counter. 
to go around the whole restaurant and drive the restaurant experience. Um, that was the strategy. It wasn't to reduce the amount of people. So automation wasn't about cost saving in the initial implementation of that. It was about getting people out from behind the counter, which is the equivalent of all the admin work we do as recruiters. So they could go out into the restaurant and talk to people and say, hey, can I get that? Thank you, are you okay? Bring you your lunch, do you need anything else? To drive the experience. I think that's, that is the trend. That's what we would want. It's, it's, it's redeploying humans to do the human jobs and getting us away from the stuff that we hate doing, don't want to do, and machines can do better. All right, uh, I think it's all. Um